Hey, what's up guys? Torvald here. Uh, this is my first video of me running through T5s. I'm going to show you the fit here, which you can see on this screen. Um, I recorded myself running a couple T5s. I did three in total basically to show you what to do and how to do it. Um, so I did all the recordings and I'm just going to do this voiceover run through three different sites and uh, kind of help, you know, if you're not really familiar, kind of show you what to do and how to do it. Um, this is the fit I use right here on screen right now. It is uh, the Ishtar, obviously, with full mid-grades and a couple other implants. Um, personally, I like this fit a lot. Um, I know people use different fits. I'm not going to go over the fit too much. Um, you can see it on screen here. I'll also post it down in the, the, the description. So if you want to um, check it out and use it, hopefully this will help you. Um, it is kind of pricey, but it does pay for itself. And this is... Um, this is an exotic Ishtar. It's used to run exotic sites, but I have been able to run additional sites with it. I've been able to run um, Firestorms, Gammas. You just got to switch out the drones and whatnot. Um, so let me go ahead and show you all. Um, pull that down and show you all. So I'll go over the fit here real quick. And you can see everything there. And then right after that, I'll go into actual running the site. Um, it's my first time doing this um, this way. So hopefully this gets positive uh, feedback and I can continue to do this more if not if you have a better suggestion for me something I could do differently let me know in the comments or something um, I want to do one for every uh, weather so here we go we're jumping into the site here and uh, first thing we come up against is kind of one of the things I did not want to run up against uh, two starving vidmax two harrowing two anchorings and a starving damovic uh, kind of a crappy little thing to come up against mainly because cap and the anchoring damavix make my life a lot harder with the drone with not only like myself escaping but the drone so right here i make the decision to go straight for an anchoring damavix to try and kill one of them off quickly um and you'll see why i make that decision a little later to try and kill the anchoring but once i realized that my drones aren't doing the job fast enough I figured out that all right, I need to get on these starving Vedmax because these are going to be my biggest threat, and I'll just take care of the anchorings later. Um, so not perfect piloting, obviously. There uh, could have done things differently, but I made that decision. Um, big part of the abyss is target choice, and you've got you know split second decisions to make these. I'm not the perfect pilot, so um, here I'm on the starving Vedmax, and you can see in a second that the anchoring Damavix and you know what I feared was happened. So the anchoring Damavix are on me right now. Um, and boom, there they go. They are off me. They are going for my drones. I consume the hard the hard shell just to give myself that extra cushion. Um, now the anchoring Damavix are going for my drones, which uh, sucks because those harrowing Vedmax, you can see the starvings are going 800 meters a second. And while I'm close to killing it, I've got those anchorings on and uh, I kind of make a mistake here. And I realize, all right, my drones aren't going to be able to kill this guy because they can't keep up. I should have kept drones on them, but here in a second, I uh, I pulled them back, even though they're so close to killing them. Um, see right there, I pull them back, which I could have finished them off. I just thought, okay, these anchorings on my drones and I can be able to catch them. Not a smart move, but as soon as the drones get back and the anchorings get off them, I relaunch them. So there's something to remember. Um, let your drones finish the job right there. So relaunch the drones again. Obviously, I got my gun on, my, on the uh, Damvik not doing much. I should have switched the gun over, but... Here you can see my cap's getting low, my tank is struggling, the damage is building up. So this is kind of like a not good scenario for me, but somehow I pull through. So I start doing some heat, one starving bed max down, my cap, you know, a little bit of pressure off the cap, but I still got that other starving bed max. Um, Harrowing Vedmax do a lot of damage as they ramp up. You can see the, some of their hits right now are, you know, two, three hundred, four hundred hits. Um, so this is where the tank is going to start struggling, and obviously with the starvings on me, the the new pressure is real. Um, I, I start approaching the bioadaptive cache because I can't really use my micro warp drive and there's not much I can do there. I mean, it's kind of up to you how you want to pilot. You can see there I dip in the, in the armor a little bit and now damage from them is, is pretty hot and kind of a spot of trouble, but both starving Vedmax. Um, I did think about taking blue pill, but I was like, you know what? I'm in the first sight. I don't want to risk getting a negative effect such as capacitor or anything like that. So. Um, I wait off, I hold off on the blue pill, throw some heat on my stuff, and at this point, I feel pretty comfortable. Um, I don't have the ADC yet, but I do know that my tank's gonna hold up against these two if I just, you know, manage heat well and keep damage, you know, keep these drones on the, on the Vedmax. So, here goes the first of the Harrowing Vedmax. He's going down. 
And once the first Harwing Vedmac is down, I know I'm in the clear. Um, while the damage is still pretty alarming from one Vedmac, it's it's manageable. Um, the shield holds up. So here he goes. Damage on the second Harwing Vedmac. I've still got my gun. The, the gun is more... Um, I use it mostly. I, I don't use the gun a whole lot. Um, or rather, three guns. I don't use them a whole lot. Mainly for uh, the caches, just so my drones don't have to worry about it. And if anything gets close. Um, well, you can see I'm not put, doing a lot of damage to the Damovic. If stuff gets within range, I can put some damage on them. It helps in those rooms where there's like a bunch of little frigates or drones or whatnot. Um, helps me be able, to, be able to take care of those. Um, at this point, I know the Vedmax going down. I know I'm good to go. Um, so I'll just keep damage on him, keep him down. Boom, there we go. Three... Damavix left. I don't know why I do this. I, I always like I always mess around with splitting drone damage. You'll see me do that quite a bit in these videos. Um, so I just get repairs going. I don't know why the shield didn't go, but there we go. Now shield repairs going. Um, there you can see the gun on the bioadaptive cache. So that way the drones can focus on what they need to focus on. And I don't have to break them off. Um, then there I go again, splitting drones because it's a good idea, right? <laughs> I don't know why I do that. It's just a uh, just have it, I guess. You'll see me do it successfully in a in a future room, um, but in this one, there's no reason. I should just put them all in the same one. Um, in my cargo right now, I did kind of put these videos out of order, or these three runs, I put them out of order. I ran other rooms, um, but I mixed them all together in one video, so you'll see me get all the loot from these three rooms, so you can get an idea of what the income is. Um, before you jump gate. Um, let's think of the four R's real quick. Uh, re recall, reload, repair, rejuvenate. <laughs> Remember that. Um, before I go into that more, we'll talk about these. So I thought about using medium drones, but I'm like, you know what? I've got heavy drones. This is another room where with a Ishtar, with a drone, uh, you know, a drone boat. This is kind of alarming. These battle cruisers do a crap ton of damage, um, and they just like burst it. So I thought about using medium so they move faster so I can recall them. Um, and this is kind of like a really worst, ca not worst case scenario, but kind of one of those um, times where all right, you've got everything working against you. In an exotic site, you've got the scan resolution bonus. So everything targets faster. Um, so when you see that yellow box, it's already too late. Um, and then you'll see there's that the blue cloud, which increases SIG radius, which if your drones are in there, makes them an easier target. And you also see four multi-body tracking pylons on my overview there that makes it easier to track so basically what that's setting these battle cruisers up for is basically the perfect application so once you see them yellow box if they're in the blue cloud and within range of a turret they can really wipe out your drones so you just got to be watching as you're taking them down um i decided to turn my mic war drive off here because i want my drones to be able to get to me faster i don't want these guys within range of me because i know five of them will hurt my tank a lot um, so I want to keep them away from me, but there we go. We got the yellow box. So I start pulling them back. Um, and this is where the time kind of starts adding up. Um, I've had some times where it's kind of an issue with, you know, pulling drones and launching them again. That's why you kind of want to keep these guys. You want to keep them away from you, but you don't want to keep them too far. I'd say, I'd say about 20 to 25 kilometers is a good range. That gives you enough time to pull your drones and relaunch them without them having to travel. I mean, you see, saw how far they were for me there. They were like 40 kilometers plus. Um, so the closer you keep these guys, the better, but too close within like 15, 20 kilometers. That's where you want to like draw the line. Um, so here they're starting to burn into me. Uh, they're getting closer and that, yeah, you know, that sweeter spot and I'm just going to keep drones on them. And if I see yellow box, pull them off. Um, but yeah, when you got these blue clouds, these tracking pylons and all that, it's just, you're sitting there kind of thinking, oh crap, my, my poor drones, like they're about to take a beating. But luckily the aggro wasn't that bad, but just know that is an issue. You will, I mean, if all, if two or three of these guys went on a drone, like right there, you see there's one yellow box. And so I want my drones before I want to finish them off. I want to see how their application is. So luckily that one yellow box did not get my drones before I was able to kill that guy. Um, that's kind of a judgment call you have to make. Uh, basically just determine like if your drones what their positioning is and if you want to finish off what you're killing or if you want to just go ahead and panic and pull them back um, you can see that first one is dipping to about 50% shield um, see time I got about 11 minutes remaining so um, I, I took a lot longer in the first room than I wanted to um, typically you want to aim for about five minutes per room I would say that's a good 
time to aim for maximum if you go over six and a half minutes in one room that's when you're in a spot of trouble um but you want to aim for like five minutes per room that's when you know you're at a good comfy spot um anything less than that and you're good obviously the faster the better um so here there's only three of them left and not too worried once they get down to three of these uh tesseras once i get down to three of them I'm, I'm comfortable with letting them get in closer i know my tank can handle it um and i'll be good from there and i just leave my tank running this is a cap stable fit um what i was talking about earlier um the four r's recall reload repair rejuvenate basically let your ship before you activate um before you activate the gate do those four things reload very important um, or recall your drones. Don't leave your drones behind. Um, done that before with geckos. It is not fun. There, I got 10 minutes, 40 seconds remaining. Um, <laughs> get your drones back. Reload. You do not want to go into a site, especially if you're like rapid light fit or something like that, or if you got ancils. Like you want to, you know, you want to have the most amount of uh, ammo. You want to have a full magazine ready to go. Um, repair. If you overheated your modules at all repair them like take a couple seconds get the repair going and then rejuvenate get your cap back let you know get as much cap as you can see like i, I turn my shield booster off even though i keep i run it constantly i turned it off that way i can get a little bit of cap back um that way if you come into a starving you know a room with starvings or newts or anything like that you're fresh and good to go so here this is a fun room um this is where i like to do my little medium drones and i kind of like split my drones this is where it's actually a good idea um, if you disagree, I, you know, it's whatever you like. But me, personally, this is how I like to handle this. Um, instead of sending all five drones after one and killing them one by one, I just assign each drone to one thing. All five drones are attacking five different targets. And, um, surprisingly, these little guys, they do a lot of damage. Um, here I'm looking at the different conduits. Very important, if you are not looking to do PvP, you take the origin conduit. If you are in a third room of a site and you see a proving conduit and an origin conduit and you do not want to lose your ship, take the origin conduit. If you're going for PvP and you know what you're doing, go for the proving. But um, if you don't know what the proving conduit is, don't take it. <laughs> Just don't do it. You're running into something you don't want to deal with. Um, but yeah, I was saying was these little guys right here, they do a lot of damage, actually. Like, you can see my shield. I mean, obviously, I got my active reps going, so it's not that bad, but... If you let these guys get damage and keep damage on you, like I've got my micro warp drive going, so I'm staying away from them. I've got the uh, got the snare casters down, so I don't, I'm not being webbed anymore. If you let these guys stay on you, they will hurt. Um, and right here, I make the decision. I usually don't go for extraction nodes, but I'm like, you know what? This one's close. Let's go check it out and see what's in it. Um, it, you know, in, in lower tiers, they're not worth it at all. But in higher tiers, if you've got the time to spare, I normally don't mess with them, even if, even if I have the full capability to do so. Um, I just, you know, my, my goal is just get through the site. So we'll check out what's in this extraction node right here. But you can see how my drones are just like killing everything. And instead of having them all focus on one target, I have them split. You know, me personally, I like that. They're that extraction node had about, what, 2.9 million estimated value in it. So not really worth it. But... It's worth it if you think there's three, you know, anywhere from two, three extraction nodes per site, and they have an average of like four or five mil per, um, which I think that's about the average in T5s. Each extraction node 10 is, has anywhere from like two to five mil. Um, so they add up. So if you can get them, go for them. I, you know, I just make the decision not to just to make my life easier. Some people use like, like if you're using a Gila, they'll use a heavy missile launcher. That way they get that long range and they can like throw a heavy missile at it and then use the tractor unit to pull it in. Um, me, I could easily throw a tractor unit in this thing and send one drone, you know, focusing on extraction nodes. But like I said, I just, you know, I run these the way I do and maybe one day I'll, I'll wisen up and do that. Um, so here's the last bioadaptive cache in the third site or third room of the first site. <laughs> or if we're going in order, I didn't really do these in order, but you know what I mean. Um, you can see I already got some goodies. Um, I think the last box from the previous room had about, what, 40 million in it. So this one, obviously I'm impatient, 42 million. So I think total from this site, um, and this is all estimated value. This is, you know, it, so, you know, know that we're going off estimated values and I don't know exact price. I'm just basing it off loosely. Um, I got two sites with about 40 million and that first site only had about 9 million. So, we'll, you know, was that about... Oh, 80 90 million is right there from one site which took me 
Um, based off the time, it looks like it took me about 14 minutes. Um, had a few close calls, but there's that one. There's the first sight. Um, if I had done this correctly, I would have, or if I had, you know, recorded this video better, I would have, um, I would have the, um, the loot average, you know, I'd have the loot added up properly, but I ran these out, or I made this video out of order. So right there, I've got 210 million estimated value. I think that's after two runs, but we'll see. Like I said, I did these out of order, so we'll see what happens here. And there's me just scrolling over the estimated values for all of them. Remember, these are estimated values. Um, so know that. All right, here we go with the second site or third site. Like I said, don't know what it is. Actually, no, this is the first site. I've got no loot. This is the first site. <laughs> so there we go. I forget what I came up against in here. Let's see. All my bookmarks there. All right, so first site out of the three, since I decided to run them out of order. Uh, boom, a bunch of Lashak. So these are either, Lashak rooms are re either really good or really bad. Um, so here I've got striking and blinding. My first priority is to kill at least one blinding. Um, that is because basically these guys, they sensor dampen you, which means you can't target out as far. Um, and it's kind of a pain to deal with because when they kind of like starburst, like the blinding Lashak, Lashaks will fly away. Um, you know, they'll try and get away from you and it kind of becomes a pain to have to chase them down. So I just get on the blinding. Um, they all do rough, they all do the same damage. So I just focus on the, getting the blinding down. Um, you can see my tank is holding up against all these. However, the, um, their weapon systems do build up, they ramp up damage. So the longer they're on you, the worst it is, the worse it is for you. Um, so the faster you kill them, the better. Um, as you can see, I'm taking them out pretty quickly. Uh, I'm not really having an issue. Only four left. So from here, I've popped my ADC already. So I, I know I'm good. I've got three Lashaks left. Um, I, I like Lashak rooms because I know that I can complete them quickly. Um, you can see that I've, not, I've, I've only been in here for a short amount of time. And I've already killed half of the Lashaks in the room. And the others are going to go down pretty quickly. Um, there is a good instance of me being able to use my gun. You can see that I did put a one drone on that spark needle, which was unnecessary completely. But I decided, you know what? All right, drones go focus on that. And I get my gun going on this guy. So there's some use out of the gun. Um, it may or may not kill whatever you're trying to go for, but it helps. Uh, if you could think of a better use for those high slots, go for it. This is what I use them for, and I like it. Um, you can see the Lashaks are repping the little spark needle. Otherwise, I would have killed him. He is pretty... He is getting close. I don't think. Yeah, here's where I go for the loot. He's going for my drones. You can see yellow box them. And let's see what we get out of the first box. This was the first site out of the three I ran. So let's see here. The shacks are going down. We got 30, 30 million isk right there from the first, uh, first room. Drones are killing that guy. And notice how quickly we did that. That went by really quickly. Um, that's what I like about the shack rooms. While they can be alarming that I'm at 17 minutes, 26 seconds. So that took me like two and a half minutes to do that room. Um, so yeah, I have 17 minutes to go through two more rooms. That gives, That's a nice little cushion. You should look forward to the shack rooms. If you struggle with them, that's a different story. But me, when I see a little room, I'm like, sweet. This is about to be an easy site. Or a short site, rather. So going into the second room, you can see that I'm... Uh, I've got recall, repair, reload, rejuvenate, all that going. And here's another one that I like. Like I said, I love these little sites. I love these rooms because I can just put my drones, split them, and just murder everything pretty easily. Um, if there's a deviant suppressor, those are always fun to use because I'm using Vespas, which, you know, they're shields. So they can, as soon as I pull them back, they get full, um, full recharge. And the automated suppressors, they do damage these guys. Um, so it's always good to use those. It'll just like help you complete them faster. Um, again, these guys do pump out quite a bit of damage. Um, you can see right there, everything's taking damage from that medium suppressor. So in my mind, I'm like, all right, well, that thing's going to help me. So I'm going to go chill on it. Um, it won't do enough damage to my drones to matter. And if it does start getting them low, I can just pull them back. And as soon as they come back, they'll have full shield and we'll be good to go. Um, 
Yeah, you can see the damage these things pump out if you just, you know, if you're not ready. They just, they really uh, hammer down on you. Yeah, here you can see everything's taking damage from that suppressor, which is just making you complete the site a lot faster. And the drones are just finishing the job. Um, so good thing to consider while you're running these sites. If you're running a missile fit, um, if you got missiles going, it's kind of harder to use this method. Though I have, like before, if I fly an Orthrus or something, sometimes I'll just orbit this and I'll just throw missiles occasionally and they'll hit and this thing will complete it faster. Um, it just depends. But yeah, you can see here my drones aren't even... They're, they're barely getting scratched, which is, which is nice for me. Um, completes it a lot easier. After having the Lashak room first, um, and then this room, this is like one of those really just golden sites where things are things are good. You know, this is, this is one of those where you complete the total site in like eight minutes, and, you know, however much risk you get in that eight minutes is just like a good feeling because you know how quickly you did it. All right, finishing up here. Couple dudes to kill. They're 40 kilometers away, which is kind of annoying that they're that far, but easy stuff. Uh, coming into the bioadaptive cache here, get the gun on it, and let's see what kind of goodies the Abyss has for us. Now, mind you, I've got 64 million estimated value in my cargo, and that's from the first um, first room and how fast we did it. So I just gotta kill this last guy right here, get on the loot nice and slowly. And there's 13 million is for what very little effort I've put out so far. Obviously, I'm risking a lot. You know, this ship and the pod's expensive. But right now, I'm at 14 minutes and 15 seconds, roughly, by the time I activate this gate. Um, or 14, 10, whatever. Um, so that means we're almost at the six-minute mark, and we're two rooms down. And we're about, I'd say, about 50 million is positive so far. So there we go. Get as much cap back, everything's reloaded, drones recalled, nothing needs repaired. Remember that, remember that, remember that. That could hurt you if you forget. And here we go into the last room. And again, we got a Lashak room. Kind of the same format as the first room. Um, though this time, in, instead of three blinding, there's two blinding and one tangling. Um, again, I want to take out the um, one of the blinding first. Because those sensor dampenings with two or three of them on you, they can really... Um, it can be a, a real big pain in the ass. Um, so yeah, just get drones. They travel slowly, um, especially because I have that Goliath. But I've got that ADC to pop, um, which I just did there, just to be safe. Um, and by the time that ADC is over, those drones will be on that Lashak getting damage on him, and they'll be in the fray, and they'll be able to. I mean, watch how fastly they uh, watch how fast they take these guys out. You can see two or three volleys, and boom. Um, so here I go for the other the other blinding. If you're not, if you don't have a mic warp drive, um, the tangling is not too much of an issue. Obviously, you don't want to get tangled. You don't want to get uh, webbed and held down. But um, I have mic warp drive fit. That little shack is not going to catch me, so I don't have to worry about bringing him down. Um, this is a different story. If you come up against starving Lashaks, um, if you come up against a starving Lashak room, um, you want to kill those starvings as soon as possible. Uh, those are priority number one. Um, a good way to deal with the starving Lashaks, especially in a fit like this, is as soon as you come into the room, you turn directly around and you fly away. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head what the exact numbers for the, um, what the range on their newts are, but I know if you just stay like 30, 35 kilometers plus away from them, you can, you should be good. Um, so yeah, like I said, if you come in here and you see two or three starving Lashaks, turn directly around and fly away. Um, get far away from them send your drones after them and just get them down um, you have a, if, if you have this setup you have a full 10 heavy drones so if you lose one or two as long as you bring down those starvings as fast as possible um, so yeah you can see like you saw earlier how the starving vedmax how much they affected this tank you do not want to deal with that with um, with Lashax they you know they do a lot more um, Newts than the Vedmax, so yeah, you do not want to deal with having a starving Vedmax or starving Lashax on top of you. That is really painful to deal with. All right, here we go into the last box of the third room. Um, mind you, we've completed this. I mean, look at that. There's 70 million estimated value right there. Now there's Mutaplasm. Is that market is a whole nother ball game. 
Um, but you can see 70 million. So total, that puts us about 100 million ist so far. And we've completed this site in nine minutes. We have 11 minutes remaining. This is a really like, it's one of those sites where you just come out of it, you're like, heck yes, I love the abyss. Like this was awesome. It was easy, the money was good. Um, but it doesn't always pan out like that. You can see from the first site, we had to throw heat on, we had to use drugs, all that good stuff. Um, so yeah, you never know what you're gonna get. It's like a box of chocolates or something. All right, so here we go into the final room. Um, again, I did these completely out of order, so I have nothing. This was actually the, chronologically, this was the last site I ran. I ran the first two, and then I did the docked up, put everything away, and then I ran this one. Um, but let's not worry about that. Just focus on the, the tactics and whatnot. Um, so here we go into the third room. I don't remember what comes up here. All right, so here we go. We got the Benthic Abyssal Overlord. Um, so basically, this guy does a crap ton of damage if you let him. Uh, if you get within range of him, he can. He has a couple different uh, effects. He, um, depending on which one it is, they can. Um, what is that? Target paint you, web you, stuff like that. Um, you can see the deviant suppressors are already doing a lot of the hand, like the the handiwork for me. They've already got most of these things like almost dead. So I'm just throwing drones at them real quick just to guarantee their deaths. And then as soon as all these guys are down, um, really you want to get damage on the big guy as soon as possible. But there are these alternative like the snare casters and the plate forgers that you just don't want to deal with. And depending on what you're flying. Um, for example, if you are some kind of missile boat and there are fog casters on the field, you might want to get rid of those. Because those guys, you know, obviously they disrupt your weapons and make your missiles not fly as far or be as effective. So take care of those. Um, yeah, I like taking care of the plate forgers just because plate forgers, they do logistics. They, they rep the armor of that guy. And while it's not a lot, it's still something that I don't want on the field. So I just take it out real quick. And here you can see, um, everything's dead. So I just got damage on him. My drones are doing perfectly fine. Even though there are suppressors, I don't have to worry about that. I think their shield regen basically negates that damage. If not, they don't have any problems. So I want to get close to this guy to get my guns on him. Um, he does start doing a lot of damage like that. And out of panic, I <laughs> hit that ADC, you know, way too late. And there was no reason for me to do that. So I just, there we go. There's that. And now I'm on him. I've got my gun damage on him. You can see it's not a lot. So from here, I'm like, okay, you know what? This ain't really worth it. And I can see that he's webbing me there. Um, like I said, depending on which one he is, he'll either like target paint you, web you, anything like that. Um, so with him webbing me, I'm like, all right, screw this. I'm out of here. I'm going to get a little farther from him, see how far his webs go. I said, I don't remember the numbers off the top of my head, but you know, you just get some distance from him, get out of that web range. So you're not slowed down. Um, right now it's kind of dumb cause I do have the mic warp drive on, which is booming my signature radius and he is still webbing me. Um, but my tank is holding, he's not getting the damage on me. Luckily for me, um, I could have done that smarter. Um, I could have orbited him a lot farther out and not stayed that close to him, but I survived. So that's the important part. Just things to remember while you're doing these sites. Um, so here I start to go for the cash. I can see he's dying. Drones are taking him out. My tank is holding. So I just burn straight for the cash because I know he's going to go down and I'm just going to get in the position to get the cash and get out of here. So we'll be able to see, um, estimated values kind of in real time on this one. So I've got 9.6 million isk estimated value in my hold right now and so by the end of the site we'll kind of have a good you know a better representation of how much money you can make and out of the first box here once i open it we got 37 million is estimated value now that estimated value is a lot more accurate when you're getting items like surveys and the materials like that when you get mutaplasmids estimated value is just like it's just, I mean, it's based off the market. However, the mutaplasmid market will, like by the time you get that thing on the market and you sell it, that you, it could be, it, the price could be, you know, so much lower. So it just depends. But you know, these items right here are nice and stable. Um, so there's the first room. Second room, we got these cilia and lucids. Um, here's where target choice is very important. Um, this isn't too much of a high threat room. However, sentinels, they, um, they do newt. And you've got five of them right there, so you want to get rid of them as soon as possible. And then you also have those two entanglers, which could be bad if they catch you or your drones. Um, my goal was to not let them catch me. Obviously, I didn't look at positioning to accurately pilot. I just automatically default to orbiting the transfer conduit with my micro drive 
on at 30 kilometers. Um, normally that does it for me, but sometimes you get unlu unlucky and get caught. But as I kill these sentinels, um, you can see that they are nuding me, but from their range, they're not really doing much. So if I can just keep them away from me and not get webbed, I'm good. Um, there is the, the entangler that are yellow boxing. Um, it's kind of a, eh, it, it, it's not the worst thing that could happen, but you want to watch out for that because you do not, like your drones, I mean, you've got heavy drones that are already slowed down by the Goliath. Um, you've got these heavy drones that are already slowed by the Goliath goliath and they're already heavy in that uh, they're already slow in that case so you kind of want to um just watch out for that and be thinking of that uh if you start getting a bunch of yellow boxes on a drone that's webbed you can be saying bye bye to one drone um i've got you know 10 heavies total so it's not something i'm too worried about my main focus right now is killing these sentinels getting the newts off the field and then after that we are good to go um tanks holding up caps holding up so far these guys are still staying far enough away from me to where they're not um, nuding too much, but trust me, one that when they do get on you, um, at this point, I realize that I'm good and I'm just gonna start heading towards the cash. Um, yeah, if you you get five of these sentinels on you in the beginning, if you just fly straight into them or you let them get you know those newts on you, it's uh, you're gonna feel that it's not good. Um, I don't recommend trying it, but if you want to see the effects, you think you can handle it, go for it. Um, here I go splitting damage again. Are just throwing drones on everything not too worried about what's happening here um, at this point all the newts are gone my tanks gonna hold up I, everything's gonna die um, do it however you do I can like I said I could probably do this in a more efficient smarter way but it works drones are killing those guys everything's working out um, just slow booting my way to the cache here you have that one sentinel left which I do want dead but you can see my cap and tank and everything's you know going pretty good once I get these entanglers down, full focus on the Sentinel. And just pay attention while you're running these sites to where your drones are, because travel time for drones is a thing. And you gotta remember these guys don't always bunch up. Sometimes they'll be like 20 kilometers apart. There we got 20 million estimated value right there. So that puts us at 68 million estimated value in our hold, minus the 9 million initially. So you know, 59 million right there from two rooms. But yeah, drone travel time is a thing you gotta remember. Um, if you're switching drones, switching targets, um, if you're actually like zoomed out and you're you know you, you're seeing the full battlefield and like what's going on around you, you'll and you notice that two guys are far apart. It's not really that smart to switch drones because they gotta travel all that way to get damage on them. So that's something you gotta think about. Um, me, I just want to stare at this gorgeous Ischar the whole time, so I just keep the camera right there and I don't really use smart tactics like that. I didn't die, so there's that. Uh, clean up crew right here, just finishing these last two, and I just want to get my guns on there, just so the guns feel like they're getting some action too, you know. Don't want anything being left out here. And that will be the second room completed after this guy's dead. Um, you can see the time up there, that little red number. Um, we got 12 and a half minutes remaining. Um, if you don't know, you start these sites with 20 minutes total. And, um... So when that, you can see like the 10 minute mark, it was whenever it's directly at the, the you know, the little dash is at the six o'clock position, you're at the 10 minute mark. Um, if you're completing the second room and you're not at the 10 minute mark yet, you can, you're, you're doing pretty good. Um, again, the five minute rule, under five minutes is what you wanna aim for. Um, so you can see I'm doing really good on time and I'm going to this last room with a lot of time. The faster you get done, the better, but you know, as long as you're surviving. So I'm going into this final room with, let's just say 12 minutes. Um, now this one's an interesting one, uh, mainly because these deep watchers are basically just like giant lumps that just sit there and do nothing but rep each other. Now they do hurt. Um, they actually do quite a bit of damage. Um, so my idea here is just kill these guys real quick, get drones over there, get drones to take out these three, and then I'll focus. And now you can see if you're flying straight at them, uh, if you're not, you know, if you're making yourself an easy target, these guys will hurt you. Um... A lot of people think these guys don't do much damage, but if you actually sit there and let them do damage, they do quite a bit. Um, as you can see right there, the Deep Watcher one just hit me for 722. That was a pretty big hit. Um, basically, you just want to be moving and not let them hit you. Their weapon system is really weird. I don't really know how it works. Um, it looks like a bunch of tiny missile things that just follow you around. Like, it looks like what that thing shoots out, but they're actually, like, following you and... 
don't really know what they are. Um, but here we go, starting to get damage on them. Now they do sit there and just rep each other. So um, you don't want to spend too much time. If there's all this side stuff, you don't want to spend too much time killing them. You want to get damage on these deep watchers as soon as possible. Uh, me, I just I like to take care of those little things off to the side so they don't hurt my drones. Um, but now we got damage going on this guy. Um, I am target painted, so that's something to remember. We got damage going on this guy, and from here it's pretty easy. It's it's basically just. And there you can see them armor repping. But here it's pretty easy. You can see that they're just sitting there repping each other. They're not really going anywhere. Um, in low DPS ships, or if you're in a missile ship and these guys are on a suppressor, this could be a real pain. But right here I've got an easy job. They're just sitting there. Drones are hammering down on them. I'm going to go grab the loot. And then once I'm done with that, I can get in range and get my weapons on or get my guns on them just to get that extra DPS to finish faster. Um, again. You can see on my overview, there's an origin conduit and a proven conduit. Don't take the proven conduit. Don't do it. <laughs> unless you unless you know exactly what you're doing and you're um, you're going for PvP, don't do it. Um, you can see I got the Velez Super Title weapon there. That is the faction battleship gun. Um, that's the, how you make the that's the blueprint to make the gun. Um, pretty good drop. The the medium one's the better one, the more or rather more expensive one. But uh, this heavy one, I don't recall the price. I want to say it's like 20 or 30 million isk. Um, I want to say the medium one's probably like 60 million isk, the blueprint. So we'll just say that one's 20 million isk, just a lowball it. Um, so right there, we got 80 million estimated value in our hold, um, plus 20 million for that blueprint, minus 9 million for the stuff we started with, the pace, the, uh, the drugs, and all that. So we're looking at roughly like 90 million isk for this one site completed. Um, Obviously, that could change. The one thing you know you do have those um, the red Triglavian surveys, what, what's called red loot. It's like the uh, wormhole blue loot. That is the only thing that is 100% guaranteed price. Like everything else is market dependent. That's the one thing that you can sell. There are 100,000 isk per unit. So if the market goes to hell and you can, you know, all the prices are completely screwed, that's the one item you sell those to NPCs. Um, for a guaranteed price. So right there, I have 28.6 million isk guaranteed right there from those surveys. Um, and then everything else adds up to 70 million and um, plus the 20 million for the blueprint. Um, give or take a few isk, I don't know. I, you can look up the prices when you watch this video and maybe it's worth a lot, maybe it's worth a little. Um, you can see easy room, no stress here. Once everything's dead, um, we're good to go. But that is me running three rooms. Um, I appreciate you watching this. This is my first time doing this video. If there's something that I could do better or something that I could improve on with these videos, let me know. Um, please, please let me know. I'm going to do more of these. So this one was my exotic. I'm going to do um, one for each site. So, you know, I'll have five videos of me running T5s. Um, like I said, if there's something I could do better, please tell me. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, like like uh subscribe i do live streaming um i mostly do abyssal pvp oh right there i pulled up the price look at that i think it's lowest price is 35 million is cool that's good to know um so yeah that was me running um thank you if, you, if you're still here and watching this i appreciate it um hopefully this helped you out if you have any questions let me know if you have any feedback please let me know i want to do you know i want to do this more often and i want to hopefully help people with this um so yeah appreciate you watching thanks for the support um and I'll see y'all later.